and get ridiculous. Chicago's next sensation, MCO Dizzy S. Big shoulders, getting it done. Second city, second to none. Rapping fast like a twister, you better be listening. Party people, here we go. <laughs> Welcome, everybody to this fireside chat with the Q brothers. We're very excited to have you guys here today. Uh, just so you guys know, my name is Matt Roan. I am a very proud member of the board of directors of the Chicago Children's Choir. We also have Isaiah Kalaranan. Isaiah, did I do it right? Uh, yeah, close enough. <laughs> God, Isaiah's coming to <laughs> us live from Daytona Beach Spring Break 2020. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah, you're the best. Thank you for being with us. He is a uh, VOC member and a part of the Singer Student uh, Council. And uh, most importantly, we have the Q Brothers here, founded by brothers GQ and JQ. They are a Chicago-based, award-winning, and internationally acclaimed group of theater artists, creating original work by merging hip-hop and theater, adapting classic stories and original, entertaining, and comedic experiences. They coined the term ad raptation upon their creation of a 1990 hit off-Broadway, The Bomity of Errors, have composed a bunch of other brilliant works, including Long Way Home, an adaptation of Homer's Odyssey done with the Chicago Children's Choir. They also act and direct and own a men's uh, grooming store with their beautiful family. They played at Lollapalooza the last 14 years. They've done voiceover work for video games, starred and directed their own movies. and. Um, they also have a brand new single called Buggin' that is out that features a very powerful cameo from my own daughter, uh, dancing very hard to a fantastic kids record. Um, JQ also has what, three kids? Yeah, I got yeah. three of them. So uh, needless to say, busy gentlemen, we're thrilled that they could be here with us this evening. Uh, we had natural light one second ago, it is gone. Yeah. It's very dark in <laughs> Chicago. Um, <laughs> Uh, we just want to thank you guys for being here, and I'd like to turn it over to Isaiah, who's got our first question, and we'll get on into it. Thanks for the kind introduction, Matt. That was really nice. Of course, buddy. Yeah, so he said, you know, this is a fireside chat. First question is, he goes, obviously, being the Q Brothers, you guys have been together for like almost, I think, more than two decades, two decades, yeah? So, uh, uh, yeah. you know, like, what, like, what was like the, the like start to like the Q Brothers, you know? How did you like come together being brothers, you know? I... I have a brother and I know it's very hard to like even talk to him sometimes. <laughs> what, was, what was like the whole start of the Q Brothers? Um, well, the start was when I was three and a half years old, um, living on Costner Ave in Chicago at Irving Park, my mom came home with a new toy. <laughs> um, and his name was JQ. So pretty much my favorite toy I've ever had in my whole life. <laughs> um, I think he just called me a toy. <laughs> yeah. 90s hip hop. That's a bad thing, I think. Um, no, I didn't mean like uh, T-O-I. Don't they spell it T-O-I? No. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, we, we, you know, Isaiah, we've been playing together ever since we can remember. Um, I mean, G probably remembers a little something before that, but I clearly, I don't have any of my life without G in it. And, since I never forget it, son, don't you remember? <laughs> no, and since we've been, uh, you know, just playing, like I remember early, early days where I had my little Fisher Price tape machine, and we had this closet full of toys, um, and and like my parents' extra clothes, like the fancy clothes that didn't fit in their normal closet, and they had like extra like dresses and like longer coats and things off and that was stuff. what's up off season stuff too like yeah like off season <laughs> stuff and, and, but it was like you know like a bunch of basically like coats and stuff and then like a bunch of like you know garbage cans full of like old toys and and the shelves full of games and books and so we were just like we pick out a book pick out a game, get toys, we put on costumes, we press record on the Fisher Price tape recorder, and we would just start making up these little audio plays. I mean, clearly we didn't need to put the costume on because, <laughs> but, but it was fun. And, and then later, you know, um, later as the 80s ensued and gear became uh, like more compact and they weren't just, um, 
only in big studios. We had a little drum machine, and and uh, instead of playing piano, we had a, a synthesizer, like a monophonic synthesizer from like Roland, like an old school one. And we started. I started banging out little beats, and G would play like you know Axel F on the thing, and we would like <laughs> set up then a, an audio or a, even a video camera. At one point, we even got. It was like this big, you know, and like the quality is worse that than was, like my that old. Was, that was Kaka. That was uncle. That was our uncle's. He would bring it over. Yeah, yeah. And then, and we would like make up these silly little songs and play. So we've been doing this forever. And as G likes to say, like, you know, now we just figured out a way to get paid for it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> rarely. It's theater. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nowadays, not at all. For the next three months, not at all. I am uh, very much in the same boat with you guys. It is, it is at home. There's no masses to entertain, uh, no, no stages to rock right now. So yeah. we're, we're feeling you. Um, you know, obviously, growing up, you were already drawn to music and, and creating stories. Um, what was it? that really stuck with you as kids, like other big sources of inspiration, um, you know, musical artists, filmmakers, anything that as kids was kind of like a bedrock foundation for you guys as, as you started to do this in a more professional sort of way? Um, I think for me, the first people that come to mind are Michael Jordan and um, Walter Payton. Okay. Um, because even though we were, even though that everything Jay said is exactly right, we were doing all that. Like we weren't very conscious that that was like a, a, a life path or that that was even an option when we sure. grew up or got older. Um, I mean, not like playing in the NBA was more realistic for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but heads but at that it time, was. It was. It, it was. It yeah. was. At the time, it was. It was. It was definitely closer to home for me um <clears throat> but i don't know about how realistic that was jay i mean that's not really you know. no but i mean like what you're saying like we didn't we, we we weren't we weren't um trying to get anywhere by doing those things no we we're just playing and we were fortunate enough to live in a house with a, a nurse and a pharmacist for parents who happened to be amazingly open and just embraced um, what is now like seen as the, um, as the way you teach young kids is through play and interest, mm -hmm. right? But then that wasn't as true. And so the, we were just fortunate enough to be in a house and have awesome parents that just said like, you're into this, I'm gonna support that. Or like, yeah, maybe, maybe buying this, maybe they won't use this drum machine. And this is probably a pretty expensive piece of gear looking back at the time, you know? And they were like, but what if they do? And what could they learn from? I don't even know what it is, you know? And I'm going to buy it for them. Props to them, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. I think without that support, we would have never um, played enough to find out if we were making something cool or if we wanted to keep playing like that and try and turn it into a career, you know? Right. And, sure. and Isaiah, to jump a little bit more quickly through the hoops of your question, like when I was a scene, so, so part of that answer about Michael Jordan and Walter Payton was to say that we, we were more into sports than anything. I definitely was more into sports. Jay was, Jay was more into music, but he still played a lot of sports and stuff. But I was like deeply into sports. And I, when I didn't make a basketball team in high school, um, I quickly picked up wrestling. Quick, I dropped that as quickly as I picked it up. But, um, <laughs> but I did find um, cross country for a bit. And then I found lacrosse. And I loved lacrosse. I was in love with lacrosse. And I played it incessantly for um, the rest of my freshman year, my entire sophomore year, my junior year. And <clears throat> I was supposed to be, and I was on varsity as a sophomore, like I excelled in it and I did well. And I was supposed to be the captain of the scene of, of the lacrosse team at Loyola Academy, our senior year. Um, and I had gone through like some, some pretty heavy stuff my junior year. Um, with the passing of a friend in uh, high school. And I kind of, it made me question like 
everything that I thought was like I was supposed to do. Like it made, it just made me think very consciously about like life is, is precious. And like, if I were to go tomorrow, would I be okay with that? And <clears throat> the answer at that time was no, I wouldn't because you know what, I'm doing a bunch of stuff I don't want to do. So I stopped playing lacrosse without talking to anyone. I just didn't show up. I was supposed to be a captain. I'm not saying this is the way you should do it, <laughs> but I did not, I just, I just didn't go to practice that year. And I grabbed, um, I, there was five, five of my, I went to, at the time, Loyal Academy was all male school. And it was senior year. And I was like, I need to meet some more females. So I'm going to ask five of my guy friends to all go out an audition for the spring musical down the yes. block at, at Marillac, which was the all girls school down the block. And, and, um, and the play was the whiz. And they were all like, sure, dude, if you think it's a good idea. And none, like no one, had, like everyone said yes to this idea. And we all got roles and we number, none of us had ever acted before. And I got the role of the scarecrow in the whiz. And then wow. I had so much fun doing that. And I won an award for best actor in a musical that year at Loyal Academy. Never had acted before in my life. So, but, and, and then I went on to Bates College to study anthrop anthropology and Spanish. And I couldn't keep up with the reading load for anthropology. I had to drop that as a major. And I, second semester, freshman year, saw, a, saw a sign up for a play and audition for it, got a good role. And then was like, okay, I'm shifting everything toward acting. I'm going to take all the acting classes. The next year I transferred to NYU and went to Tisch School of the Arts for, for two years. And that's what put me deeply in the field of acting okay. over, over 20 years ago. And so um, <clears throat> then I, at that time, when I was at NYU, um, after those two years, I, was, I wanted to do a, a final project and incorporate hip hop and theater. Um, we were supposed mm -hmm. to... Um, we were supposed to, the idea was we were gonna create our, an original piece okay. where, um, uh, where, we, where we wrote all the material, but we only had five weeks to put it together. And um, two weeks in, we only had like two pages of material. And we had, we had, we had a slot to perform for the public in, in three weeks for, like, with like an 80 minute show that didn't exist yet. So, um, my friends were like, you gotta, we have to adapt something. We have to adapt something. And I was like, cool. Like, you mean like make a, a version of something that already exists? And they're like, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, um, what like, that mean? Well, yeah. So what, it, so like what? And they're like, well, it's gotta be public domain. And I'm like, so what does that mean? And they're like, it's gotta be free. Like we can't, we can't, we can't pay for anything. So it's, sure. I'm like, so like, what are our options, you know? And then when I realized what they're talking about, I'm like, okay, so like, I, I like Kafka a lot, you know, and like someone was like Dickens and someone else said Shakespeare. Um, anyway, we landed on Shakespeare and mostly because I had just done a play, a Shakespeare play for the first time in my life in a way that Shakespeare made sense to me and language, musical language and poetry made sense and it clicked in my head. And, um, <clears throat> and then when we started translating Shakespeare into modern rhyme, it it was only a matter of moments before we just saw it come off the page and we thought, okay, this is what we have to do. And that became the vomity of errors. Yeah. At which Got time JQ was in, it, he was studying at Hampshire College and he was spending most of his time in New York anyway. And I think he was transferring to NYU at the time. And I was like, Jay, we, we need original beats. Um, you know, you've been making stuff. And he's like, yeah, mostly I'm DJing, but I'll, I'll make some original stuff for you. And so, he, that was that was his intro into the theater was mm -hmm. like we need beats and then like what what was it a couple a year or two before you were like we're like jay we need someone else on stage and you're like yeah i'll do it <laughs> like, <clears throat> like six like, years yeah yeah i mean w we you know I, g has always pulled me towards um acting and performance and i've always pulled him towards music and and rap uh mm -hmm. and that that pull is is crucial um because that was because g is my first collaborator right. and uh, ever in life and and so we're just constantly in a state of collaboration so um you know that play began q brothers as like what we do it sort of but 
that's why I was taking you back to the family room closet is because right. it really started so long ago, you know, but it's just sort of like always pulling, always pulling and pushing your brother to do um, things that are outside their comfort zone. And then also um, giving them gifts that are well within their comfort zone right on. Um, for <clears throat> them to shine um, because you actually acknowledge and embrace what they're good at that you cannot do. And you see, it in a, you see it in a way that nobody else does because you can't always explain to a group of people what your vision is, but you don't have to explain most of it to your brother that you... You, you have so much shared history that yeah. you get each other. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like yeah. another language, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we have some, some questions that uh, some of our participants want answered. I do want to ask you guys one more question because obviously you've come a long way from doing a college project to then making it, uh, making this collaboration with the Chicago Children's Choir and, and doing Long Way Home and staging it, directing it, writing beats, the whole thing. Um, can you give us just a little taste of how that collaboration came together and kind of how you, how you use this contemporary form of, of hip hop and uh, to like, what are you trying to say with it? How are you, how are you using that, that uh, genre to kind of create new art and, and express yourselves? Um, so years ago, Josephine saw one of our plays at Chicago Shakespeare Theater. Yeah, and my mother-in-law dragged her to Othello the Remix. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and was so like, you got to see this. <laughs> and she bugged out. Yeah, yeah, and then she and G are sort of like spiritual brother and sister. Yeah, and so they yeah. just like hit it off. And I don't even know what they were saying. It was barely English, <laughs> and, and but they were just seriously simpatico uh, on a on like another plane that I do not operate on. And um, <laughs> and and th before I knew it, I was like, "What just happened at that lunch?" And he's like, They're, "We're gonna do a piece with them." And I was like, "I, I didn't hear any of that." <laughs> but that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> big, big dreamers together. Yeah. And, he's like, and it's going to be the most epic story ever. And it's going to be <laughs> Chicago based. And we were like thinking about that. I'm like, well, the most epic story ever is the Odyssey. What if we base it in Chicago? And she's like, great, I'm selling that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then he like sold it. And then he was like, hey, Jay, what's the Odyssey about? <laughs> True story, true story. <laughs> the mask, oh, the mask is off. We're, we're yeah. really getting into it. Like, right who now. wrote yeah. it? Oh. <laughs> no, and then it's like you know, and then it's and then it's like it goes through you know hundreds of drafts after that of before course. we get to. It. And then we had to actually collaborate with the choir and then see what they do, and then be able to like bring in the choir in a way that 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 setting the choir up for success because it was really a way to showcase. Um, it became a love letter to the city of Chicago. And you know, you saw that part of the, the you saw the, la the last part of that process having the, the piece, you know? Absolutely. <clears throat> um, go ahead, Isaiah. Yeah, go ahead, Isaiah. <laughs> oh. Isaiah, you talk too much, you talk too much, Isaiah. Come on, give it a moment. Uh, no, uh, talk about Long Way Home or like just, I mean, for me, it was just a, amazing experience with the with the two brothers you know like it was not no was, actual fire happening here it's just my fire alarm <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, being like a part of the process like like being like going on stage and doing it like it wasn't like a, like any other performance i've ever done in my life honestly like I, i've never been a part like i know that it's cedar Rum, i've never been a part of like a story that featured us like on the stage that featured the city of chicago which was like, it was a great, like I had friends that went there like, man, that was amazing. Like, I know, like it took a long time <laughs> to get there, but it was, it was a great experience. I really thank you guys for that, you know? Yeah, thanks for being a part of it. It was yeah. really special, it was thank really you. cool. No doubt. Um, so speaking of memorable performances, uh, one of our first questions here was, what is your most memorable performance as a, uh, as a group and, and what made it so special? Um, 
I, I we always come back to the globe. It's tough not to, it's yeah. tough not to come back to that. Yeah. Line. I mean, I would say there's two. Um, doing Othello the remix, getting commissioned by the globe and doing that opening performance, you know, for an oversold crowd, you know, of 1,600 people, 800 of whom are standing and you're in the, the true Shakespeare theater and you think 1,600 people is going to be easy because I won't even see anyone. And you realize how vertical that space is. Yeah. And you're like, I can tell you each person in the audience is eye color. You know, <laughs> like, oh, like that's the, that's crazy, you know, and it was the first time anyone had put a DJ, had put amplified sound, had put speakers in that theater. Oh, so wow. It was pretty historical. But I also, um, we did that show in Cook County Prison and that one, it was extremely powerful in a very different way uh, as well. Yeah, Cook County Jail. Um, yeah, that one was especially powerful because of the content of that story and the way that we, um, the way that we tell it. Um, and because it's hip hop and because it's about the rise and, and fall epic fall of a, of a young black MC mm -hmm. and going into the prisons where, um, most of it is filled with young black men was Heavy, heavy. I'm sure. Yeah, it's every every word that comes out of your mouth on that stage has takes on a whole new meaning um, when you're telling the story in that way and to the people who are there. So that was definitely unforgettable. Right on. Uh, another question we have, yeah, I got it. another question we have is, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you've had to face in your career? <clears throat> working with my brother <laughs> it's a double-edged sword people it's not all perfect in <laughs> <laughs> um, no. oh, uh, <clears throat> biggest challenges um ego there you go that's where i was you know true collaboration and like maturing like when you're young we've been in multiple groups now me and g and um we've watched um certain uh phases of our career those groups unravel in in ways um not in like a dramatic fashion but just huh. not continue sometimes, sometimes yeah sometimes that too <laughs> quite dramatic <laughs> <laughs> um but like you know not necessarily is what i meant but like you know but just stop working together and it's like a lot of that is based on like ego and me and what I'm not getting. And when you really embrace what somebody else is bringing, then, um, you know, and you get a little older, that, that's, that goes away or it can go away. We've really worked hard at it. And this current Q Brothers Collective is very, very cool and very loving of each other and very embracing of each other's talents and aware of each other's uh, skills slash shortcomings, which are usually the same things, you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, on that note, Jay, well said and really well put together. Um, biggest challenges are always, always the, the within yourself, you know? It's a, and they're always ego-based. The everything, every challenge I've ever faced in this career path has been um, when I wasn't willing to accept myself and celebrate my own truth. When I, when I wanted, when I wanted to be something that I thought other people were, would think is awesome. Right. You know, and that, that comes from like everything from like wanting fame or wanting money or wanting power. It's always, it's never, it, it comes from actually having it too. And then not having it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like you, know. you think that's what you want, but that's not what you, that's not what it's not, it's not what you really want. That's not what I've really, I've weighed a lot of times is it's not what that's not, it's never going to serve me. Sure. I could become I could become the biggest A lister Hollywood phenomenon. And <clears throat> as much as a human part of me wants to experience that, that will 
never ever serve me. It might be really fun. It might, it wouldn't not, it may not not serve me. Like it, it, would, it doesn't have to work against me. But if that is what I'm going it's for. It's not the goal. Yeah, if that's yeah. the goal, then I'm, I'm destroyed. I've already destroyed myself. That makes if, total sense. If I, I, think we, do, I think we also like our first project ever got like big and scored us like an MTV deal. I was 19, you know, G was 22. It's like coming down after that was hard. Um, that was a big challenge because A, like you expect then everything you do has to be. So we worked really hard to not be precious with our art. Um, I think that people then can get in their head after they've had success. And especially if it happens early and you think that it's, you think that the reward for making a great piece of art or making a great anything is the notoriety or the money or whatever we had mm -hmm. from the first thing. And then you, you because it, it trains you and you're young and still impressionable, you think it took us a long time, a decade or more to break that. Okay. You know, and that, 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 that I'm still breaking that, frankly, you sure. know, mm -hmm. cause that, cause it's so formative at that age, you know? Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I know um, we've had a couple of different questions here in the Q and A of people asking kind of, you know, advice for aspiring producers, actors. And I feel like you actually just nailed that a lot. It's a lot of uh, like work on the self and really knowing what you're getting into and why you're doing it. Um, and I feel like you just knocked out like three or four of the questions that we, that we had <laughs> yeah. here. I mean, um, on, on that note, I think uh, based on what you just said, those questions were, if it brings you joy to do it, then you're in the right, then you're doing the right thing. If it, if it feels like pressure and, 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 it, and it's eating at you, then it's not what you should be doing. That makes sense. Yeah, you know, like I would say, don't forget to play. Like, I think that people get focused and right now, everyone, these, the, the younger generation right now is so good at like marketing themselves and they so have a, have a deep understanding from jump that it's, that you have to market yourself and that you have to master um, some of that stuff. And that's great. Those are things we didn't have, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and we didn't know how to do and we like, we we missed some stuff not that i care anymore but like it, it, in we missed some opportunities probably because we were not good at that or didn't have that but but it's like uh don't forget to play and don't make everything about making a product you know like you you have the luxury right now of time and less responsibility like play 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 because it, you, that's how you come up with innovative new ideas is accidentally. G didn't go, we're going to blend hip hop and Shakespeare and it's going to travel the world to international arts festivals and it will launch a career of education and corporate gigs <laughs> and commissions from various nonprofits. Like nobody, <laughs> right? Like we didn't, we didn't plan that. G was just like, I love rap. This, <laughs> this Shakespeare stuff is actually pretty fun. Yeah. What if we mix them? Even yeah. better, free. That was it. <laughs> that was it. So just play, it. just play. And you know what? If you love it and you put in enough hours, you're going to make it dope and you're going to, your charm and your love will come out of it because you like it. And so then it's going to be a great product. And you will develop a whole skill set of how to produce, of how to direct, of how to, of how to write because it comes from you and because you'll, find that the only way you're going to really make it happen sometimes is if you learn how to do all those things. You actually are forced to learn how to do all those things. We became producers, directors, writers uh, after being actors and rappers because we, because we didn't allow ourselves to feel limited because we didn't say, I can't do that because that's not what I am. We just said, what does this need to get done? Oh, well, we have to tell, this is before it, the internet like we have to tell broadway producers that we have a, a showcase going on for this bombity of errors thing that we did we're going to put up a 15 minute showcase in new york city right after i graduated how do we let them know we track down a list of, of phone numbers for offices of every broadway and off-broadway producer in new york yes. like 250 producers 
and we waited until the office was closed so that we could leave a, a rap voicemail on their answering machine because they only had an answering with machine. an invitation to this thing all in rhyme the whole all thing in rhyme with it, with eight bars or twelve bars of rhyme like two three hundred of these that is yeah. so we like just did that the coolest hustle I've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> it's so dope and you know what of those two three hundred one producer showed up and one assistant showed up and no, the were, assistant were, ended up getting us. A director, a producer, everything came from that. It was worth it. And the assistant only came because we said there was free champagne and hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yeah, and she had friends in town. Yeah. Was there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey. One of the guys in our group, his mom was studying cooking at the Culinary Institute, like on Broadway, and was like, I'll, I'll make some hors d'oeuvres and like buy a cheap bottle of champagne. Incredible. So, yeah. That, that amazing. is amazing. Um, we are running out of time. We maybe just do one more question mostly because we're uh, yeah, obviously we, we've gotten to know you Isaiah and I through through doing long way home and I think that those who are in the mix have also um, probably at least performed those songs as as members of the children's choir but what do you guys have in store for the future what are you are writing what are you acting in what are you making um, obviously the uh, buggin is is out and is delightful uh, we've been playing it at the house a bunch but We'd love to know just a little bit about what you guys got on the uh, on the horizon. Um, we got a bunch of different stuff going on. I'm I'm we're both working on different things musically. I'm producing a lot of electronic music um, cool. under the moniker Javid Music Party. So like, I have a SoundCloud. You all can check out uh, Javid is J A V I D Javid Music Party, and I'm working on a new album for that right now. It's I'm I'm learning the fine tuning of mixing. Um, from my, my mentor and J, brother JQ, who has been my guide. And he's like, over the past five years, I've been like producing more and more electronic music. And, um, and Jay has been like Yoda, my, 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 my techno yoga. I love it. Your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, he, he gave me a list of stuff I got to do before I get this next record mastered, but that's what I've been working on this past three weeks, basically. Right on. Yeah, we got the kids record. I mean, the single's out, but the rest of the record comes out in like a week or two. So, you know, go if everyone, these, I don't know, kids don't have Facebook anymore. But if anyone does, <laughs> then go to Q Brothers and like that. Or go to Q Brothers 1 on Instagram and check that out. So any announcements we make, we'll make through there. But I'm spinning every Friday for little kids of all ages um but uh and there's like a zoom room and then they mute the zoom room and then everyone dances together and i'm spinning a family friendly hip hop set on fridays and then saturday nights i'm spinning like more aggressive stuff for adults and um dance parties older, older kids that want to dance hard um and uh and that's then, all that's on twitch your jq makes beats yeah, Twitch Janky awesome. Makes Beats is on that. And then, uh, yeah, we're working on a, um, we have, it, all these things got delayed because of um, pa the pandemic, but um, but we uh, we have a Romeo and Juliet we're working on. Um, With Writer's it's Theater. Pretty epic. It's like 16 people in the cast. Um, cool. Biggest cast we've worked with outside of, obviously, CCC, um, which was like 100. <laughs> Cool, hundred folks. <laughs> yeah, um, and then um, you know we we have a pilot of a new sketch show that we're working on, and we're figuring out what uh, DSP to work, work with and what sort of streaming platform and how we want to parse that out. Cool. But uh, it's sort of like um, a very you know um, raw you? sketch comedy and rhyme. Very raw sketch comedy. Very inappropriate humor. Really not for kids at all <laughs> um, um under the name the rap pack um okay. so we're doing that and it's sort of like a like a dirty hip-hop version of sinatra and the rap pack from back in the day well i'm sure this the kids will love it <laughs> <They'll find laughs> you, it, you gotta love do it. something for the kids you gotta do something for the adults you know <laughs> oh my god um well thank you guys so much for taking time out of your schedules i know we're all stuck indoors but i'm sure you got a million things going on we appreciate you for doing that and uh what are I, you making for dinner tonight Rowan? 
Yeah, what are you I, making for dinner? I am the executive <laughs> chef at this household. However, it's leftovers this evening. We went, we went, <laughs> we went hard on the, uh, on the taco fixings yesterday, so we're just going to run taco it back. Tuesday. You do oh. like literal Taco Tuesdays. <laughs> it was just uh, a very happy coincidence. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Jay's, Jay's on the Taco Tuesday tip for sure. Yeah, I was like, I finally figured out something my whole family will eat. Absolutely. That, that only takes like 20, 30 minutes to make, so that's huge. One yeah. night a week, that's huge. See, Virtual. see, see! I be cooking a lot, and <laughs> when it, when when it's just one of me, I I get like three or four meals out of that same same yeah, food. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to stretch it out. I'm yeah. trying to have leftovers from two nights ago tonight, <laughs> and <then laughs> leftovers from last night tomorrow. Nice, I love it. Well, you guys are the best. It was great rapping with you. Thank um, you, man. Hey, everybody, you. stay safe. Please stay safe yeah. and yeah. much yeah. love to you and your families. And I hope everyone stays healthy. Yeah. I love you all. Thank you for being with us. Thank you guys. Thank you. Peace. Take care. Peace. Peace.